So today, tonight, we're going to talk about what the image is and is not. So back to the verse here. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let them rule, okay, over all of creation, essentially. Characteristics of the image of God. This is something possessed by both men and women. And I'm going to go out to a text so you can get a little bit of a wider look here. Let's close the column. So God created man in his own image, male and female. God blessed them, gives them the mandate to do these things. And so we can't isolate imaging language to just man because English Bibles say man. No, it, it, it's referring to male and female in the context. And again, Adam as a Hebrew term is you know, all encompassing. It distinguishes humanity from all earthly creatures. God never gives this mandate to anything else. He never creates anything else other than beings in the supernatural world. That's a hint at the plurality language that we'll talk about next week. But as far as the terrestrial creation, he never creates anything else but humanity in connection with his image, okay? So that's a point of uniqueness. It's, it's neither incremental nor partial. We're going to see this in a little bit because there's language later in Genesis that presumes a connection back to Genesis 1, 26 through 28, when people in the biblical story have children. The language about, that is mentioned about their children is connected back to Genesis 1. And so the assumption is that when you have kids, well, they're this image thing as well. So there's no sense that you get part of it and then you got to get more or it's, you know, there's some kind of incremental process. There's nothing like that. You either have it or you don't, whatever it is. And we're going to talk about that tonight. Again, generationally, let's just go to one of those passages. This is Adam's descendants to Noah. And we get the generations of Adam, Adam. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness after his image. Okay, so we have both of the terms used in Genesis 1.26 in this verse, but it's linked to, okay, the son that Adam has. If we keep going, let's see here if I want to pick this up now. Oh, well, well, wait. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait for that. He, he fathered a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. And let's jump to this one. 9, 6, Genesis 9, 6. Whoever sheds the blood of man, okay, this is after the flood, God is speaking to Noah. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. Why? For God made man in his own image. Now, in the Genesis 5 instance, the Genesis 126 language is sort of isolated in a verse to that specific generation. Adam's son or sons, okay? But here in Genesis 9, it's just wide open. The whole point of Genesis 9, 6 is that if you take an innocent human life, that's bad, okay? And you are now subject to the same punishment. The punishment, again, is commensurate with the crime. Why? Because God created humankind in his image. 